Hey there, Shuby Doodlers. How are you doing? Well, today we're going to draw this conch and you're going to need a pencil and a pen and an eraser. And then we're going to color it in with watercolors. You see, you need a brush as well. <laughs> but let's not talk about it. Let's do it. OK, we're going to need some kind of a plan here. And so I'm going to start around about there and I'm going to draw a bit of a curve like that. Now I'm drawing in pencil, but draw very, very gently because um, we're going to erase these lines a little later. And then we're going to come down there like that, maybe even just slightly more of an angle like that. And then we want to come down to about there. And then we're going to come a little nice little curve up there and a nice little curve up there, maybe a bit more pointed. And then we're going to want a line going across there. Actually, I'm going to take that up that little bit more, kind of like that. This is actually the third time I filmed this, and I keep making it too long and not high enough. So that's what I'm I'm doing at the moment. And then if we kind of take that line sort of roughly across there, and then find the halfway mark and come to round about here, and draw a line coming through it, then that will give you kind of the angle <laughs> that you're going to want for the sort of the cone of the whole thing. So here we've got this bit of a curve there like that. And then we're going to want a line coming out there. So these are the kind of knobbles, the knuckles of the, the main um, sort of the body of the conch. And, and so that's like a little mountain or the top of the knuckle. And then we want another one there like that. And then another one coming there. And then that's going to kind of come down and sweep up there like that. And in fact, this is going to then sweep in there too. Now here, we're going to want the, I think of it as a sail, uh, but the kind of the opening um, mouth part of the conch. So this is where the, the mollusk inside kind of uh, appears, and blah, 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 with these little tentacles or whatever they have. And then that's going to come sort of out there a bit like that. And then we're going to get a nice, kind of sail curve around there but this is actually going to be a little bit kind of wiggly around there this just doesn't quite feel right at the moment i think i'm going to take this down here a bit more and bring that to there and that kind of feel that wants to come more like that so yes yeah, it's, it's it's not that easy to get it <laughs> quite right <laughs> the first time but anyway uh, practice hmm, makes perfect so here we want these little sort of striation-y castellations so this is you know the these are the early parts of the conch as it grows it sort of goes around and around and around um, and sort of getting bigger and bigger and bigger basically um, so that should really do it now it's time to ink it in. And if you've watched this far, you obviously love drawing. So look, click down here. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Renner Drawing channel. Keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week. Um, now this is a Rotring Tiki Graphic pen. It's I'm, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. Um, but I love this pen. M mostly, I think, because it is a pigment pen. It has pigment ink. I'm just going to dot that away like that make it just fade out uh, and pigment ink if you're doing watercolor line and wash sort of thing pigment ink is great because it dries quickly and really permanent you know waterproof which is what you want with watercolor and i'm going to come down here and <laughs> and this pen has actually gone wrong so they're meant to be really kind of you know this is a 0 0.3 and they're meant to be really kind of tight uh these the fiber tip part here uh, so that you get an, an equal line all the way around but this i think i've been pressing too hard and i've split the fibers and so sometimes if you press very gently you'll get a nice thin line if you press <laughs> hard it sort of goes all sort of thick and wobbly um which is a bit like a, a, a like an old-fashioned dip pen which is kind of really quite nice in the way um and then here Again, we want this to be quite sort of knobbly. And then we want that just to sort of come down to that little horn down there. And then we're also going to want another little one because it's kind of resting on these three prongs. 
and again here we want these um, kind of <laughs> crenellations, castellations. These these are kind of junior versions of these knuckles along here, you know. So they were sort of laid down a long time ago as the conch was growing, and then this is the sort of the tip there like that. I'm drawing this for one of my patrons on Patreon, Linda, who is a homeschooler and they are studying the lord of the flies you know the one of the boys on the island and and a conch is quite an important thing i've done a couple of videos already of uh, drawing characters so you click up here to find out more about that um and so the conch is quite an important part of lord of the flies so i thought i would do this conch now we want this nice wavy kind of thing it gets smaller and smaller and then well, that will come around there so I thought I would do the conch. And in fact, if this was going to be blown, you'd have to cut that bit off there or snap it off to make a hole so you can blow down the end of it. Uh, if you kind of look over here, uh, I'll also put a link uh, to a video about blowing a conch horn, uh, which is it's a really fun video. And so this is sort of part of my uh, Lord of the Flies series of videos. And I think I'm going to do another one of Ralph actually blowing the conch and calling all the kids together now this part here is really smooth uh, it's kind of like a sh shiny enamel uh, and we need a little bit along here it's kind of like a little lip as well and make this quite sort of crumbly a line along there like that so uh, the, the mollusk inside <laughs> it's got a very sensitive skin it doesn't want to be up against all this rubbish on the outside it wants a nice smooth inside and along the edge here it wants that to be smooth as well it doesn't want to get all rough around the edges none of us do now when you are absolutely sure that the ink is dry and i use a hairdryer <laughs> then you can erase all those pencil lines and no one will know how you drew it so accurately so now uh, i'm going to start here and i'm using my wrist to do this swinging action and I'm going to start round right about there and I'm going to do this flick with a curve and a flick. And these curves are leaning over and getting sort of more like that. So now from there, I'm going to do something similar. But these are going to get a bit shorter and they're <laughs> leaning upwards and getting more vertical. And as they get vertical, they want to just flick straight out and then... They start curving the other direction and leaning over the other direction as well. So, and it's that little curve you want to get. So take your time getting the start point and then flick it out like that. And then you'll get a, a nice a sort of thin point at the end of the flick. And that helps to give a sort of feeling of the, the curve of the inside of that kind of the sail or whatever it is called I, th I think of it as a sail we're going to have this as a kind of a, a a focus point for lines as well so i'm going to take that sort of out like that and another one sort of coming that way and it don't make them really crumbly <laughs> so this is going to be a valley so we'll have sort of one coming off up there and then maybe one up into the um, into the, the the peak and just sort of bring them out sort of like that and then we're going to kind of accentuate these sort of striations on the outside because it's all kind of built up in layers and and we'll just do these kind of curves like that and so we want that to be sort of coming around so we're really accentuating the valley here like that and maybe a little bit around there and and again try and make it crumbly is, a, is the best word that I can use it's, it's, it's not a, a perfect kind of um, curve so you want them to be uh, wiggly wiggly lines this wiggly lines are what we're after so and maybe sort of some along there as well and then here we're going to want these kind of curves 
and we're going to again sort of accentuate the valleys like that and again accentuate the valley and maybe a bit in there and here we might have quite a, a deep valley and then that one maybe not quite so deep and then that one into there and along there so we've got a, a kind of a valley there and something going on there and here we're just gonna <laughs> put something in there now here we want this resting on the ground so i'm going to put a flick there and a flick there flick each side and then sort of bring <laughs> these bring it forward like that and um, we're going to do one there one there one there one there and then maybe a bit like that another one behind so yeah i'm quite pleased with that i'm looking at it on my monitor here so once again make sure it's dry if you are sitting on a beautiful tropical island beach at the moment and you've got a real conch shell in front of you then you've probably got beautiful tropical sunshine and your ink and paint is drying faster than you can cope with but uh, otherwise, if you're like me in uh, cold and damp November, England at the moment, uh, the, the ink and the paint doesn't dry instantly. So you might need to use a hairdryer or something or just time, just let it let it dry. Stick it on the radiator. But that might make the paper ruckle, all sorts of problems. The paper is, is sea white um, watercolour paper. You'll find all the links down below. I am an Amazon affiliate, I should tell you. So I do get a commission from anything that you do. But that helps me run this channel and you won't be charged any extra. My patrons will know, you can also support me on Patreon, <laughs> that Naples yellow is my kind of favourite go-to colour. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by painting it around there like that, all around the edge. And then I think I might just kind of leave some little gaps as well, like that. And then I'm going to <laughs> squeeze the handle of the brush a bit and then that will clear all the colour off the brush, which means I can then fade the colour out. And then I'm going to get Scarlet Lake um, and I'm going to start painting that right up to the edge there like that. I'm going to slightly <laughs> clean my brush so it's not quite so much scarlet, I've gone over the edge there, but never mind. Um, and just bring that along. And now I'm going to clean the brush because here I want this to fade up into the pink and I want it to be quite pale in between. Um, and in fact, I think it's just too much. So I'm just going to dab out some color there with kitchen towel. Kitchen towel is the, the greatest invention for <laughs> watercolour. <laughs> and we can just let that sort of fade in there for the moment. I'm going to go back to Naples Yellow. And I'm just going to kind of paint this in here. Um, and I'm going to leave a little bit, it's sort of whitish at the bottom. So I'm not painting it very dark. This is, this is just coloured water. I'm not painting. Watercolour is it's not like painting with oil paints. <laughs> Do you remember we used to get sweets and candies they were kind of wrapped in cellophane like that and uh, you could see through it and so watercolour is the same way. The light is coming from the paper. I've got very bright lights here which are bouncing off the paper and then if you do that you're putting a, a yellow filter over the top so the light goes down, hits the white paper, bounces back through the sheet and you only see yellow because it's it's blocking out everything else that isn't yellow. And that's what we're doing with, with watercolour. Uh, and it is very watery. So the light goes down through the paint, hits the paper, and then comes back through this very, very thin, transparent glaze. It's not, it's not like painting with oil or acrylics. And now I'm going to get a bit of that pink again. And I'm going to work my way down this... Um, this kind of lip here and I'm going to leave it white along the top there as a highlight reflection like that and I'm getting a lizarine crimson just to kind of darken up and give it a bit of a blush on on, on the on the darker side or where 
where there's kind of more shade. And I think while I've got that, I'm going to also do a little bit more. So I've got some alizarin crimson in here as well. And I can do some little kind of brush strokes coming out in the, in the same angles like that. So, so it's very tricky with watercolour. So those are kind of quite painterly brush strokes, but it's not really painting, it's drawing. <laughs> drawing with colour, drawing with light. And that's the joy of watercolour. Uh, uh, many, many people, they sort of think, oh, watercolour, that must be easy, that's for kids. <laughs> Remembering your school days. More Naples yellow coming out here. And I'm just going to do some little, oh, make it a bit more wet. So I'm going to squeeze some, oh, run out of water. I got another brush ready. <laughs> so I'm going to squeeze some, and I'm just going to kind of flick this down here just to give a kind of a feeling of those little um, little ripples being kind of waves to give it that bit more of a a 3D feel to it. Yeah, I, I think people sort of think, oh, yes, I remember using watercolour at school, you know, so that's for kids, so it must be easy. Um, but in fact, it's it's quite different. You know, sort of paint is obvious. You think, oh, that's yellow put the yellow down and uh, oh I need a bit of red on top of it and so you stick a bit of red on top of it and acrylic's even better because it dries more quickly and I'm just sort of <laughs> blobbing this on here now uh, this is a bit more Naples yellow uh, and I'm just doing that kind of underneath there and on the sides in the shadowy parts Oh, we need some more down there. So oil paint, you just put yellow down and, and that's it, and, or acrylic, let it dry, put red on top and you, you got a red blob on yellow. It's You have to do it completely the other way around with watercolour and you have to really think it through before you put the paint on. So a, a lot of people get very frustrated and think, oh, I can't do watercolour, I never want to do that again. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's... It, <laughs> It's not easy, but you do, you do need to practice at it uh, and just keep playing with it and, and just using it all the time. Uh, I, I found, you know, I just tend to use this one brush all the time. And and I think if you, um, if you do that, you're not having to, you're not having to think about, oh, you know, which brush and all that kind of thing. You can just concentrate on the color and what it is you're trying to do rather than worrying about all the other things. So I'm I'm adding, this is uh, yellow ochre, which is just that little bit, it's that bit darker than um, uh, Naples yellow. And, and I'm just kind of putting this in the, um, in the sort of shadowy areas in, in, in the, in the kind of the valleys of the, the knuckles, you know, those bits there. And I think we might need some, sort of more sort of spottiness to it uh, but to be able to get that spottiness I need that to dry first so let's put a bit more in there uh, while I'm waiting for it to dry I'm going to clean this brush again so look I, I'm squeezing the barrel uh, not too hard because uh, you can block the whole thing up if you squeeze too hard uh, and, and just kind of wiping against that until there's no colour which means it's just water flowing here now. So then I can come in here and just really <laughs> paint with water. And if I look to one side, I can see where it is because I can see it's all shiny where it's wet. And I can paint over with water. Because it's pigment ink, it's not now sort of blech, spreading into the where I painted it and made it wet. And now I'm going to get this colour here, which is called Neutral Tint. It's a Winsor & Newton colour. These are all Winsor & Newton paints that I use. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. I've just been using Winsor & Newton since I can remember. I think I bought this. I bought this tin, I think, in about 1980. No, it's 1979, I think I bought this tin. And, uh, and I've been using it ever since. And... So, and, and I, 
Yeah. Uh, so if you haven't got neutral tint, I know it's not a colour that's in every kind of s series. Uh, Davies Grey is a kind of colour you can also use um, that you'll generally find in other sets. So I've just got a little bit of it there and I'm making it darker. I use this a lot for if I'm doing grayscale paintings for black and white illustrated books and um, you know maybe I'll try and put another link up here it depends how many links I'm allowed for I know I've got a, a playlist of grayscale illustration and this just this color just scans really really well um, for you know for grayscale sort of painting kind of illustrations that you get uh, in a black and white book I'm not going to get my hair dryer and get this dry. So this is the, the yellow ochre here, and, and I'm gonna add a little bit of sepia. You got the, I've got this nice little sort of one, two, three here of yellow ochre, uh, burnt sienna and sepia, and they kind of, I, they work really well together in um, creating sort of browns and things like that. I'll, I'll also say that if you haven't got neutral tint, you can get something very close to it. If you get uh, sepia like that, and then a bit of French ultramarine, which you quite often get in a set. You quite often in a, in, in a beginner's set, you'll get these two colors. And you can see that's, yeah, it, you have to play with it. But that is a pretty good kind of extra sort of version of it. So a bit more blue, less brown, and you're kind of getting quite close to it. Um, so here I'm wanting sepia. Um, and I don't want it too strong, so I'm adding quite a lot of water. Actually, I think it's still a bit strong, so I'm going to add a bit of <laughs> burnt sienna just to add a bit of a little bit of warmth to it. Here, I'm, I'm just going to, oh, I'm just going to sort of do some little kind of dotty kind of things like that, just to give it a bit of um, texture and a bit more under there. And we want to kind of go with these lines, these kind of striation lines. <laughs> and I'm just going to put a bit of shadow in underneath that kind of lip. And we want a bit more here like that. And a bit sort of, so it's sort of in, on the other side of these um, lines, sort of on the other side of the, the, the knuckles as it were just a little bit more darkness in there so I'm going to get some alizarine and and this I'm mixing this in there with the with the sepia just to make it a little bit darker and I'm going to put that in there so this is kind of shade really and then I'm going to just using the tip of the brush and you can get really quite a fine point with these aquash brushes. Uh, I only use the broad, and you can get them in sets, but I generally just use the broad um, tip one for everything. And so I've been <laughs> using it for a little while now, and I know this brush quite well. And they're not that expensive. They do, they do wear out reasonably quickly, um, but they're not that expensive to replace when you need a new one I think I'm just going to add some extra little so now this is more um, burnt sienna -y color this one just some extra little sort of stripes and this is more on 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 the top of the mountainy parts and then we just sort of bring them into the into this sort of focal point up here like that and maybe a few little bits in there like that and i'm not going to touch it anymore i actually i'm quite pleased with that so there we go that is how to draw and paint a conch shell i hope you enjoyed that and if you did i hope you will want to join me again uh, so click down there and make sure you are subscribed to the shoe rona drawing channel and keep coming back every week for lots more drawing videos and and there are lots more drawing videos here and on my other channel draw stuff real easy so do make sure you're you'll subscribe and, and ring that little bell so you get notifications as well and in the meantime keep drawing 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 practice 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 and i'll see you next time you take care now bye bye